so jumping back in, hopefully you were able to make a bit of a dent in this proof. And if you notice, one of the first things is that there's one given and they jump onto a property, which means that although I'm given two pieces of information, now I'm just gonna write it on one line. So AC is congruent to BC and AX is congruent to BX. Now, students always say that they have trouble with proofs and that's okay, but you should never have trouble starting a proof because proofs always just start out with the given and I'm gonna take that and go put it on my picture. That's where we always start every single time. So we started with our given, now we're gonna take it and go put it on the picture. So AC congruent to BC, so AC congruent to BC. So I'm gonna put ticks there. And then AX congruent to BX, so I'm gonna add, I had one and one, I'm gonna do two and two. Okay, after the given freebies, so I see that they share this side that's my reflexive property, so CX congruent to CX. And maybe you said XC is congruent to XC, that's fine, as long as it's the same for both. Okay, and so if I put ticks there, well, now I've added ticks all the way around, so how are the triangles congruent? If you said SSS, you're right, because ticks all the way around means that they have three sides that match, that's side, side, side. So now I just need to finish out this statement. So triangle AXC would be congruent to triangle BXC. And then I wasn't trying to prove that the triangles were congruent though. I was trying to prove angle one congruent to angle two. Well, remember that we prove our triangles congruent and then we could say our parts are congruent by CPCTC. The same thing above, we proved our triangles congruent and then we could say CPCTC. But first, I have to prove those triangles congruent, which I did. So yes, angle one is congruent to angle two by CPCTC. And hopefully you're starting to get the same, the hang of things now. So if we take a look at this proof, angle one congruent to angle two, and angle three congruent to angle four, all given. And what's nice about a lot of these proofs is they'll kind of give you a starting point, like with your picture and they have some information so you're not just going from scratch. So now I'm gonna do one arc on one and two, two arcs on three and four, because remember that congruent angles have arcs. Well, then they said XZ congruent to XZ. Well, I can add a tick, but think, what property is it that's the same thing? Both sides, no change, and that's reflexive. So I'm still following that formula. So given freebies, there's no definitions, there's nothing else. Well, the triangles are congruent. So what would go with X, W, Z? Well, it flips, so it would go with Z, Y, X. And if we look at our picture, I see some angles with the tick between, so that would be angle side angle. So is X, Y congruent to Z, W? Yeah, by C, P, C, T, C. I proved that the triangles were congruent first. So now I can say the parts are congruent by C, P, C, T, C. So hopefully you're getting the hang of this. Let's take a look at a few more. So if I look at this proof, the first thing that I notice is that I'm proving a triangle congruent to a triangle, which means that this isn't a C, P, C, T, C proof. This means if I go back to my formula, I'm just gonna do steps one through four. I'm gonna do given freebie definitions prove, and I don't need CPCTC. CPCTC is with a part congruent to a part. So a side and a side, or an angle and an angle. So like this was an angle and an angle, but that last one that we did was a side and a side. But this proof is just a triangle congruent to a triangle. So let's start from the top. Remember that it's always givens. So QR bisects angle PQS, because it's given to me, and angle PRQ is congruent to angle SRQ, because it is given. Okay, and the only thing I could mark so far is that this statement, they told me what to mark. Angle PRQ is congruent to angle SRQ. So I can add arcs down here at the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna ask myself, so I did my givens, do I have any freebies? Well, QR is congruent to QR. Think what property is that? 
that's reflexive. Remember, if they share a side, that's reflexive property. That other one, the vertical angles, that's really popular too. So angles like that, that's another popular freebie. Okay, so reflexive property, they share a side. Well, let's go look at our definitions. I see this first given, use the word bisect. Remember that that cuts something in half. So QR, it says bisect, so it cuts angle PQS in half. Well, if it cuts the angle in half, then isn't this angle the same as that angle? So couldn't I add arcs there? And the answer is yes. If you see bisector, it means we are going to add arcs here and here. But the way that proofs go is I need to be specific. Where did I add my arcs? Well, angle PQR is congruent to angle SQR because the definition of a bisector. And I should have said this earlier. I know that you don't have this paper. That's okay. You're just paying attention, just following along. We're going to do one more, just absorbing this information. So I had arcs here, arcs there. I had a tick right there, reflexive that I forgot to add. So are the two triangles congruent? Well, yes, by angle, side, angle. And they even tell you that the order that they want you to put it in everything. So let's say that they had wanted you to prove that PQ was congruent to SQ. All you would need to do is add one line with C, P, C, T, C. But if it's your triangles, then you can just stop after that. Okay, let's take a look at another one. I want to take a look at... Let's do this one. So they gave me a lot of given information. So I'm going to say that PQ is congruent to st because it's given i'm going to go put ticks on my picture on pq and st i also know that qr is congruent to rt so i'm going to put ticks there two ticks now because that's given and they told me that r is the midpoint of ps because that's also given. Okay, now remember our formula was given, freebies, and then definitions. So I, if I look at this picture, I don't have any freebies. Those aren't vertical angles, they don't make an X. I already did the given, there's no freebies, so I'm on to definitions. Well, notice that word midpoint. So it says R is the middle point, the midpoint of PS. Well, if R is in the middle, what does it mean about this side and this side? Well, if R is in the middle, then it means that this piece matches that piece. Those are congruent, so I can add ticks. And now I'm going to state where I added my ticks. So I said that PR is congruent to SR because my order matters. So PR would go with SR. And my reason would be definition of midpoint. So you can have all sorts of definitions. You can have definition of midpoint, definition of bisector, definition of perpendicular, all sorts of different ones and proofs. So I've added ticks all the way around. Are the two triangles congruent? Yeah, by side, side, side. And what's nice is they even told you the order that they that they want you to do it in. So let's just pretend that they didn't give us this information. Let's just pretend that they wanted you to prove that angle Q is congruent to angle T. Well, I would still have to prove this first, but then I could say, yes, angle Q is congruent to angle T by C, P, C, T, C. Once we've proved that the triangles are congruent, then we can prove the parts are congruent. So that's it for today's notes. Good luck with your practice and good luck with those proofs. See you later.